for most of us, dropping a tool whilst you're at work is generally not going to be a big deal. I mean, honestly, how much damage can you do by dropping a socket wrench? Well, it all depends on where you happen to be working. And in the case of Airman Dave Powell, he happened to be working inside a nuclear missile silo, and his little slip at work was to have very serious consequences indeed. From the outside, it doesn't look like much at all. I'm guessing that many of the residents of the small town of Damascus, Arkansas, probably weren't even aware of the existence of the small installation located just a few miles up the road. You could drive right past it and not really see anything. And that was kind of the point. From the outside, Silo 374-7 was pretty much invisible. It was below ground where all the action took place, as Silo 374-7 housed one of the most powerful weapons ever created by mankind, a Titan II ballistic missile. The incident in question happened at around 6.30pm on September the 18th, 1980, during a routine maintenance shift. A two-man crew, 21-year-old Dave Powell and 19-year-old Jeff Plom, were performing pressure checks on the missile's fuel system. Dave Powell, the senior engineer, had mistakenly brought an oversized socket wrench with him instead of the approved torque wrench which he was supposed to use. Now this was a big socket wrench. It was three feet long and it had a socket head weighing in at eight pounds or just over three and a half kilos. But he was already suited up and he'd made his way into the silo so he decided not to worry just to get on and do the work. However not long into the shift he accidentally dropped the socket from his wrench which rolled over the edge of the platform and dropped 80 feet straight down before clipping the metal gantry on the side and ricocheting back into the thin aluminium skin of the missile's first stage fuel tank. The heavy socket punctured the side of the tank and highly flammable pressurised fuel began spraying out into the silo. Now, it's probably worth just stepping back for a second to describe the Titan II missile that the men were working on. The Titan II, as its name suggests, was a monster. At over 100 feet tall, it was about as tall as an eight-storey building, and it weighed in at over 135 tonnes. Put into service in the early 1960s, the Titan II was a two-stage, long-range ICBM, designed to reach pretty much anywhere on the planet to deliver its deadly payload. These things were basically space rockets, and due to their strategic role carrying nuclear warheads, they were kept in a readied state at all times, fully fuelled and armed, prepped to launch at a moment's notice, hence the constant maintenance that was carried out in the silo. The Titan II carried the United States' biggest nuclear warhead at the time, the W-53, which had a yield of around 9.5 megatons. 9.5 megatons, that little number doesn't really convey the destructive power of the W-53 warhead. So to put it in perspective, a 9.5 megaton yield is 600 times more powerful than the atomic bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima. One article I read stated that 9.5 megatons is, in fact, more powerful than the combined explosive power of every single bomb dropped in World War I and World War II put together. And that is what was sitting on top of the damaged missile, which was now spraying rocket fuel all over the silo. Powell and Plom, upon seeing the venting fuel, quickly exited the silo and informed the commander of what had happened. The decision was taken to evacuate all personnel from inside the base and soon after Air Force security and local police began evacuating nearby residents. By 10pm the complex had been fully evacuated but obviously the Air Force couldn't just leave the missile venting fuel in the silo and so a two-man team was sent back in to assess the situation and if possible to try to patch the leak. The main concern at this point was that the heavy top section of the missile, still full of fuel and with the warhead on top, would cause the weaker empty fuel tank below to crumple and collapse, possibly triggering a catastrophic explosion within the silo. In the early hours of the morning of September the 19th, Senior Airman David Livingston and Sergeant Jeff Kennedy entered the launch complex to get readings of airborne fuel concentrations in the silo. They found that the atmosphere was saturated with rocket fuel, far too dangerous for the men to stay. They would have to retreat. 
However, on the way out, Livingston received instructions to turn on the extractor fans in the complex. He re-entered the control room, turned on the fans, and made his way to the exit. Just as he was leaving, the silo exploded. The explosion was so powerful that the 750 ton silo doors, which were designed to withstand a direct nuclear strike, were torn off completely and hurled into nearby fields some half a mile away. Huge chunks of concrete were flung in all directions. The whole upper part of the Titan II missile was blasted out of the silo, in turn exploding as it was blown clear. The nuclear warheads span off into the darkness. Reporter Sid King, who had arrived at around midnight and was set up just down the road from the complex, described what he saw. I saw a tremendous flash of light. I whirled around to see this 200 foot column of flame shooting up out of the silo. Then we were hit by the most incredible boom I've ever heard. By daybreak, the situation became clear for all to see. The complex had been completely destroyed, with debris strewn all around. The gaping hole of the silo itself, just about the only recognisable feature left. Airman Livingston had been killed, and 21 other men had been wounded. The W-53 nuclear warhead was eventually found in a ditch some 200 feet from the complex. Thankfully, it was intact and undamaged, and was salvaged by Air Force personnel, who quickly removed it from the site. As news of the explosion became known to the American public, President at the time Jimmy Carter issued a statement to calm the fears of the people of Arkansas. The situation is under control, we've monitored the site very carefully, there is no indication of radioactivity at all. But one question remained, what actually caused the explosion? Well no one is 100% sure, but it's thought that sparking in the electric extractor fans that Livingston was ordered to switch on was the ignition source. The order to extract the airborne fuel to prevent the explosion actually caused the explosion, and a man lost his life and 21 more were injured. The complex was too badly damaged to be economically viable for repair, so instead the silo was filled in with the scattered debris and the whole base was buried under a new layer of topsoil and gravel. The site was later sold off and is now held under private ownership although it is listed in the National Register of Historic Places, due to the impact made by the infamous 1980 explosion. The Titan II missile program was already beyond its expected service life at the time of the accident, and the explosion at Silo 374-7 only served to hasten the mothballing of the missiles, with decommissioning beginning in 1982. However, it wasn't entirely the end of the Titans though, as many of the old missiles that were held in storage at Norton Air Base were eventually put back into service as launch vehicles for commercial satellites. The final Titan II blasted off in 2003. Not bad going for a rocket that was built in the 60s. So I guess the $64,000 question is, could the warhead have detonated? Was there really any danger of a 9.5 megaton nuclear blast in the middle of Arkansas? The answer from the authorities was a resounding no. There were safety measures in place to ensure that no accidental detonation of the warhead could ever occur. However, I'm guessing there were still plenty of nervous people that night at Silo 374-7. After all, nothing is ever really 100% guaranteed, and I'm pretty sure that the Air Force never tested those safety features by actually blowing up a real warhead just to see what would happen. Although the Titan II is now consigned to history, there is still one left. The last remaining Titan II missile can be seen at the Titan Missile Museum complex in Arizona. And although it has no fuel or warhead, it still remains an impressive sight. Not to mention a sobering reminder of the threat of nuclear annihilation which we all live under every day.